good afternoon uh, i'm going to talk i'm here to talk about uh, space technology and how it is impacting uh, common lives uh, let me begin with the question identify this astronaut no no that's not the question the question is uh, how many of you think uh, space technology is impacting your uh, day to day life can you raise your hands people who are not raised their hands you are not using space technology in your life okay so uh, probably the, during the next uh, few minutes i'll try and explain how space technology is actually impacting uh, your lives your day to day lives so as far as the benefits of uh, of space research to uh, to the common man uh, we can uh, we can classify them into two broad areas one is the indirect benefits and the other one is uh, the direct benefits which i will talk about later in my talk let's first talk with the indirect benefits we call them as spin offs there are any number of uh, technologies which have uh, actually percolated which have had their origins in space technology but are actually right now used for a variety of purposes in our daily lives you take the uh, modern uh, personal computer for example okay this computer is basically a spin off from uh, space shuttle technology and when nasa wanted to build a computer for uh, their astronauts on board the space shuttle they they wanted a very uh, you know a very uh, small computer so that the astronauts uh, can actually work on the computer at that point of time computers were all mainframe computers huge big computers which were drawing a lot of power and which were actually you know um, unwieldy so the personal computer itself is a spin off of space technology and you can have any number of examples like uh, the calipers the calipers for example the prosthetic legs which people use uh, were basically a spin off from the robotic technology which uh, jet propulsion laboratories uh, developed for all their uh, robotic missions for inter interplanetary uh, space so you have a lot of examples where space technology has been beneficial uh, in an indirect manner uh, to the uh, uh, to the common man and uh, and we also have entered an arena where there is a lot of cooperation between the various space agencies the space agencies do not vie with each other today to uh, to uh, to uh, demonstrate their uh, supremacy over the other rather we have cohesive uh, more symbiotic relationships between uh, the uh, the various space agencies the international space station i don't know if you have heard of it uh, this is one of the largest man made objects floating around the earth somewhere between 330 km to 435 km in low earth orbit you can still see it to the naked eye and this is a joint venture of many countries you have a module which is built by russia you have a module which is built by the united states you have a module which is solely developed by japan and you have you have astronauts from all over the world you know going and inhabiting this space and doing a lot of experiments for the uh, cause of uh, uh human beings humanity in general so this is another example of how uh, the space research which was a competition between uh, between many space agencies has now matured into more reasonable and more uh, productive uh, research for human well being as far as the direct benefits of uh, space research to human um, to humanity is concerned there are three main uh, areas which i would like to highlight in my talk because of the paucity of time okay we are doing good uh so the first uh, the first technology that is uh, that is directly benefiting and affecting uh, human lives is uh, remote sensing today i think it's almost unthinkable for an youngster who is visiting a new city to go there without actually browsing uh, google earth okay so google earth is actually a spin off or not not even a spin off it's directly uh, you know an application of remote sensing all the all the uh, the images that you see are basically beamed by the satellites i don't have to tell you anything all of you know the second application is that of long distance communication okay today long distance communication is enabled because of uh, satellite technology is powered by uh, satellite technology that's another direct benefit the third technology is of course uh, the navigation technology which i where i work uh, the uh, space based navigation which is coming up in a big way both in the indian perspective as well as across the world so let's uh, talk about a few applications of uh, remote sensing how remote sensing actually affects the lives of common man uh, remote sensing uh, at least in india is uh, as, uh, no started somewhere in the 1980s with the launch of irs1 irs1 a and then we have uh, progressed from uh, from uh, from a spatial resolution of something like 23 meters today we have images today we have satellites which can take images uh, better than a meters uh, with a better than a meter resolution so that's how we have progressed over the years and one of the uh, one of the satellites that we have developed is called the oceansat which is primarily um, dedicated to the study of oceans 
and also, also uh, to the study of meteorology. So, what happens is uh, there is a payload called as the ocean color monitor, which actually takes the picture of, uh, of the ocean and, uh, and specifically points out, pinpoints the areas where there is a concentration of phytoplankton. It happens that, that the, the areas where the phytoplankton is concentrated is the area where fishes thrive. So, this information becomes very valuable to fishermen and this information is then further disseminated through a network called as the village, uh, village resource center network through, through the fishermen and the fish, fishermen then uh, with armed with this information uh, uh, tend to get a better yield uh, when do going about uh, doing their jobs. So, this is one, uh, one application uh, of how uh, or one example of how uh, remote sensing is helping to better the lives of common man. The other example is of course, uh, in disaster mitigation. One is a disaster a forewarning of a disaster. Uh, so, uh, today we have a uh, lot of satellite systems which are, uh, which are enabled, uh, which are uh, put in place, so that they give you a, a timely warning about uh, natural disasters. A couple of decades back, you had, uh, you had every disaster killing thousands and thousands of people. Okay? Today, uh, because of our, because of the technology that is available uh, with us, uh, we are able to at least save a lot of human lives. Even uh, in the uh, in the uh, recently, um, in the uh, uh, the uh, uh, I think it was a few months back, which uh, when uh, Hood Hood uh, the uh, cyclone hit uh, the coast of uh, uh, India, uh, because of the uh, the forewarning that the satellites were able to provide we were able to prevent the casualties to a large extent. So, this is another application of uh, remote sensing. And not only that, uh, remote sensing also helps in, in, the, in the post planning following a disaster. So, what you are looking at here is, uh, is the image of Andaman and Nicobar Islands before uh, the uh, tsunami hit it. And this is how uh, Andaman and Nicobar uh, looked in the immediate uh, uh, immediately after the uh, tsunami hit it. So, this kind of a situational awareness gives the planners a very good uh, idea of where the areas are which are affected and what, what needs to be done to mitigate the crisis. So, this is how remote sensing pitches in at the times of uh, natural disaster. The uh, coming, coming to uh, the uh, long distance communication, uh, long distance communication has got lot of benefits. You have your uh, televisions, you have your direct to homes, you have your internet all enabled by satellite technology. But what is also happening is uh, there is uh, something called as telemedicine which is happening wherein the expertise which is available in multi speciality hospitals uh, being available made available to rural uh, and remote uh, villages uh, who otherwise do not have access to quality medicine and quality medical care through the use of uh, this long distance uh, communication. Also, uh, we, we have the same technology available uh, for uh, the uh, children of uh, rural areas uh, to have access to quality education, which is otherwise uh, not available to them uh, directly. So, these are two examples as to how long distance communication enabled by satellite technology is affecting the lives of uh, common man. Okay. The third application is, uh, is, which is coming up in a big way as far as satellite uh, based applications are concerned is satellite based navigation. Now, uh, many of you uh, must be having mobiles which are enabled with the GPS technology. So, uh, the GPS is the, uh, the first uh, satellite based navigation system that is operational and uh, it has also got a lot of strategic applications. So, uh, many countries uh, have deemed it uh, uh, as a strategic national infrastructure and they are coming up with their own system. For example, uh, the Chinese are coming up with a system called compass, the, uh, the uh, Russians, uh, the European systems, uh, European Union is coming up with uh, what is called as Galileo, the uh, Russians have already come up with GLONASS, this is near operational status. So, you have a lot of uh, satellite navigation systems coming up, uh, mushrooming all over the place. So, what has got, what India got to do with that? India is coming up with its own uh, Indian regional navigation satellite system. Its uh, satellite navigation system made uh, or uh, conceived with uh, seven geostationary satellites and uh, its primary intended area is uh, India and its immediate neighborhood. So, uh, this system or uh, uh, this system has been designed very intelligently in such a way that 
it can in operate interoperably with any of the existing uh, uh, satellite navigation systems. For example, if you have a GPS receiver with a minimal upgrade, you can make it receive both GPS satellites as well as IRNSS satellites and you can actually fix your position using two GPS satellites and two IRNSS satellites and uh, thereby enhance uh, your availability and your accuracy. In fact, a uh, couple of university students from Norway, uh, uh, right now uh, there are about three IRNSS satellites up in space as on date. And a couple of, like I said, a couple of uh, university students from uh, Norway, they have actually tracked these IRNSS satellites and uh, they have used it in conjunction with uh, the existing GPS satellites and they have actually made a paper saying that the accuracy of the positioning improves with the addition of G IRNSS satellites into the uh, GPS, uh, uh, into the GPS constellation. So, this is how uh, the satellite navigation is, uh, is changing the way you are navigating yourself. So, there will be a lot more situational awareness uh, for everybody. Everybody will come to know where they are and, and where they are going and how uh, they can go to where they want to go uh, in a very optimal manner. So, satellite navigation is going to change the way we are going to uh, live in the near future because any number of applications actually can be uh, brought forward using uh, these technologies. One such uh, technology, uh, one such application, uh, maybe I will spend my last part of my lecture on is what is called as the, uh, the space based augmentation system. How many of you have uh, traveled in an airplane? That is a very uh, simple question. A lot of people would have traveled in an airplane. Okay, how many of you have actually gone inside a cockpit of an airplane? Okay, very good. Uh, so, if today you cannot get inside a cockpit of an airplane. You will be detained because it is considered illegal, but uh, some of us have had the fortune of uh, getting inside the cockpit of an airplane. Inside the cockpit, you will see a lot of dials and displays and a lot of equipments uh, uh, for the pilot to handle. This is so because navigating an aircraft is a very cumbersome task. Uh, an aircraft, for example, has got many phases of flight. It has got a taxiing phase, then it has got a takeoff phase, then it has got an en route phase, then again it has got a landing phase, an approach phase, then it lands and then it taxis back. So, all along, let us say it takes off somewhere in New York and lands somewhere in uh, New Delhi. So, no, there are there are a lot of equipments which help navigate the aircraft. Some of the equipments are like uh, the primary surveillance radars, the secondary surveillance radars, uh, instrument landing systems, microwave landing systems, inertial navigation systems. Uh, you have NDBs, non-directional beacons, very high omni frequency range. The list is endless. So you have various equipments which handle the aircraft in various phases of flight. They hand over the aircraft from one phase to another. And uh, that is how the aircraft is uh, you know, navigated from all along from its source to its destination. Now, in doing this, uh, what is happening is there is a lot of pilot overload. The pilot has to be trained in, all, in handling all these equipments because he has to handle an equipment at a particular stage of flight. He has to move over to the next stage of flight and handle the next equipment. So, his training becomes very intensive. There is a lot of overload for him. Handling these equipments all along on the ground is a very, very costly exercise because these equipments are very, very uh, high technology. They involve a lot of uh, high technology and therefore, maintaining them in the right operating uh, uh, condition and operating them with trained manpower is a very costly exercise as well. And then finally, you have, uh, they are, they clutter up the spectral space anywhere between 800 megahertz to 1200 megahertz. They use all the frequencies. That is why, you know, if you sit in an airplane, somebody tells you, please do not operate your mobiles because it is going to interfere. So, all the uh, spectrum that will otherwise be used uh, commercially and uh, are actually used up uh, by aeronautical radio services. Uh, so, it is like it is cluttering up the spectral space. So, you clutter up the physical space, you clutter the spectral space, you have a lot of pilot overload and no, and you do not fall on optimal path. For example, if you are going from a fly, uh, going on a flight from Bangalore to New Delhi, you do not go in a direct straight line like that. You go to the first navigation aid and then you report to the next navigation aid and then so on till you finally reach a destination. This is so because you want the aircraft to be navigated very carefully. So, the International Civil Aviation Organization or the ICAO came up with this uh, uh, in 1991. We, they called it as the future air navigation systems. Can we uh, actually move from this tightly controlled regime to what is called as uh, the free flight regime? Can you fly like a bird? So, no two birds tell the other bird, I am going to fly, I am going to take off, I am going to land. It just flies and lands and hardly you see any kind of collision between birds, except in this uh, case of a predator and a prey. Otherwise, you do not see two, two birds colliding ever. So, can you can you have build a certain type of intuition and intelligence into your air navigation system, so that you can actually you know fly like birds. And uh, the fans committee said, if you want to really migrate to a, to a regime like that, 
you have to look at a large number of, uh, you have to migrate from a la using a large number of local systems like how we are using right now into a small number of global systems. And one of the global systems that they uh, recommended was satellite based navigation. So, satellite based navigation offers a very, very good uh, solution to all the navigation problems of an aircraft. But the problem is the uh, satellite navigation in its current manifestation does not have the kind of integrity that is expected for an aircraft navigation. What is integrity? Suppose I tell you there is a missile and the missile has got a 90 percent chance of uh, hitting a target you will call it as a very good missile. That is international statistics as well. If you have a launch vehicle and you say 95 percent of the time the launch vehicle is going to successfully launch the spacecraft, everybody is happy with that launch vehicle. It is a fantastic launch vehicle. But if I tell you I have an aeroplane and the chances are that 98 percent of the time I am going to land safely and take off safely. Will you ever travel in that aeroplane? No. I do not think you will travel. right? So, aeroplane requires, uh, aeroplane comes under what is called as a safety of life applications and therefore, you need a very high level of availability and reliability. So, fact one failure is too many. So, that is the kind of regime that we are talking about. So, if you want satellite navigation to help aircraft navigate, then satellite navigation has to be augmented. So, the one type of augmentation is called space based augmentation and uh, we have come up with a system called as Gagan. Gagan is uh, an acronym which stands for GPS aided geo augmented navigation. Okay. So, this is a space based, uh, space based augmentation system and uh, this is right now operational. This is a joint venture between Airports Authority of India and ISRO. So, we have come up uh, with uh, Gagan. This is another major application of satellite based navigation system. It is going to revolutionize the way aircrafts are navigated and thereby it is finally going to affect common lives because air travel will be that much more easier because all the money that is actually you are spending for navigating the aircraft will come down you will have more fuel efficient flights because you can fly directly from Bangalore to Delhi without having to touch all these points and then uh, the, the pilots have to be, uh, no, I have to, the, the, the overload on the pilots are going to come down, the stress on the ATC operators are going to come down because it is going to be one global system which is going to cover the way, uh, they cover the skies. So, uh, so the, um, the space based navigation has got a lot of applications in civil uh, air navigation and this is one such example of how space technology is affecting uh, common lives. Uh, thanks very much for your time and attention.